I told you guys I would finish it and I did. Hello my beautiful bookaholics. Today we are going to be discussing Tower, Tower of, of Dawn. Dawn by Sarah J. Nass. I know my hair looks really weird today. I tried something out different. I feel like I look like little Bo Peep but um, I'm just gonna work with it okay. I'm trying to learn different hairstyles. I have a lot of hair so might as well try and do something with it. I finished the book guys. I finished it in two days. This book was immensely immensely long it was like almost 700 pages and it, it doesn't look like it'd be 700 pages i know i didn't think it'd be that long but um the pages are like those bible pages that they've been using so they're really thin so it doesn't look like it's a big book but trust me it's a big book like 650 pages what can i tell you about this book that won't spoil you well i did give it a five out of five stars on goodreads it's kind of like a 4.9 stars because i felt like the beginning was a little bit slow so 4.9 but if you round that that that's a five stars if you guys didn't know this is the sixth book in the throne of glass series the last book comes out next week and that's crazy to me i hope you guys are so excited about it i am so excited especially after reading this book and just all the crap that went down in this book that will carry on into the next books if you haven't already picked up the throne of glass books i don't know what you are doing please please go pick up these books i promise you you will like them okay and if you don't like them then i don't know i don't know what to say because i just don't if you haven't read up until this point this book then you need to leave because I'm about to spoil you kind of what this book is about and it it's, it'll spoil you from like the last book the fifth book so if you haven't read the fifth book leave for your safety leave so this book is about kale westfall lord westfall hand of the king now we all know in the fifth book kale lost the ability to walk from the waist down his legs have no feeling so he's in a wheelchair kale and nesserin have been sent to the coggin to help get some more armies for aelin's army and along the way he meets irene because he needs irene to help him heal the tor are the Torre? I think that's I don't know how to say it. If you guys know how to say it, leave it down in the comments below because help a girl out. The Torre are basically just a big building full of healers that are studying to be healers. They're magical healers and they can they can heal just about anything. And that is when Irene comes in and she does not like Kale. It's a really good interaction. We also meet this other guy named Sartak and um <laughs> i like him a lot this book is just full of mystery and just craziness and it just builds us up for the next books and i'm so excited to see how kingdom of ash plays out because now that we've got all this stuff in here it's it's gonna be crazy and i'm scared but i'm excited but a lot anxious so that is my spoiler free review so if you haven't read tower of dawn you need to get on it because kingdom of ash comes out next week i read this in two days if you haven't read the book already go read it come back and we can discuss this beautiful awesome chaotic book together okay so let's just get into this so first in the very first beginning of the book we meet this coggin guy and he's the king of this whole entire continent that we are trying to get armies from and this whole entire kingdom this royal family is very different from anything we have ever read and i loved it i loved every second of it i loved like learning about the different siblings and learning about this kingdom's like customs the coggin has like so many children and when he names an heir they have to like battle it out it was kind of confusing because it was like they didn't have to battle it out but i guess if one of the siblings was like no i want to be heir that was when they had to battle it out to like the death which is crazy because like how could you ever grow a good relationship with your siblings when you're like oh one day i might actually kill you because i'm gonna be the heir i'm gonna be king so uh Sorry about that, but I hope there's no hard feelings. Kale just walks in there, and I don't know if he just expected them to help them right as they walked in. He's a very wise king, and I really loved seeing him talk. I just loved he hearing him talk. He was so different from any other ruler that we have read in this series because obviously Dorian's father was a demon possessed crazy man. But this guy's pretty wise, he knows what he's doing. Okay. 
I have to talk about Sartak. His name is spelled like this. When I first saw that, I, I, I really did not know how to say it at all. I, I went on Wikia, like the fandom Wikipedia, and I looked up his name and someone said how you say it. So you're supposed to say it like Sartak, but you know what that makes me think of? Zyrtec. Yeah, I think that's an allergy medication. So every single time I would see his name and I would say it out loud, I'd be like, Zyrtec? Oh, here comes Zyrtec. Warrior of the skies, helping to solve allergies every single day. Comment down below if you, you notice that, that his name kind of sounds like Zyrtec. I think it's just me. Um, in my weird mind, I think it's just me. I honestly don't know how Sarah J Mass keeps coming up with these weird, crazy names because those names, are they even like real names? Where does she find these names? So right away, we learn about the princess and her name is Princess Tumaloon. That's how I said her name, Tumaloon Tumalon. Apparently she committed suicide by jumping off a balcony, but her brother Cashin approaches Kale and is like, no. I think someone killed my sister, I need you to help me figure this out, and immediately Kale was like, the Valg are here, like, I know they're here, so you knew that in the back of your mind the whole entire book, like, we have already been invaded, we are already getting found out, the Valg are totally after us. One cringy moment was when Kale was getting ready to get ready for that bath that he'd been so wanting, and his servant, Kaja, Kaja, she pretty much offered herself up to him, and that was, uh, yeah, Thorn of Glass, we, we know that since Empire Storm, Thorn of Glass is definitely PG-13. It's just getting even more PG-13 as the books go on. We've crossed that line, and we're never going back. So in this book, we see Irene, and I just love Irene. It was so great seeing her from, like, the Assassin's Blade, because I just read that, like, a week ago, and then seeing her in Tower of Dawn. In the Assassin's Blade, she was very different. Like, her character was different personality-wise. She was more... Fragile, not really fragile, but I mean like her personality just wasn't as confident and in this book She was way more confident. I loved how rude she was to Kale. It was it was honestly hilarious She doesn't like Kale because he's the captain He was the captain of the guard of a Darlin and a Darlin They're the kingdom that basically murdered her mother. So that's why she didn't like Kale But I knew that they were gonna end up together because this fandom is not very good at keeping spoilers I kind of knew all the ships that were going to happen. I didn't know how they were going to happen, but I knew they were going to happen. So as soon as I saw Irene and her and Kale, I was like, hmm, how is this going to play out? And then the first meeting, she's a complete you-know-what to him. And it just, it just really made me really happy because in the first few books of Throne of Glass, I was die hard a kale shipper i loved kale but then queen of shadows he was so mean so mean to aelin and i was just oh oh yeah that's not a spoiler we already know that he was so mean to aelin and it just made me so mad so i just felt like this this was payback this was karma one of irene's motives she wants to go home because the war is brewing she wants to go home and she wants to help heal people that are being affected by this war hafiza which is her the leader of the Torre, has told her this is your last test you need to heal this guy and i think she kind of in the back of her head knew like Irene's gonna fall in love with this guy because she knew how Irene felt about all the Adarlin people So I think she wanted her to overcome that and she definitely did one of my favorite parts in answers that we got in this book We see how Irene has this class where she teaches all these girls Moves I just love seeing that because the Assassin's Blade which obviously I did read one week ago So it's still fresh in my brain and Selena Aelin she teaches her how to do all these moves the these defensive moves against anybody who wants to harm them and she says you need to teach this to any other girl that you can teach this to and she definitely has she has like a class every single week that she teaches these people to and I'm so excited to see Aelin and her meet but that's kind of complicated because well, we'll get, in, we'll get into that. We'll get into that later. A really creepy scene was when Irene was in the library, and this part just made me really nervous. The Valg was obviously after her as she was trying to run away from this person because she had, like, a sense that somebody is following her, and she was researching the Valg. And she comes across one of her fellow classmates, and she's dead and she looks exactly like Irene. That was just a really scary part because like they had the bell thing and all these alcalates or how do you ever say those? I don't know how. 
to say any of these names. And at the beginning, we like did not know. We did not know why are these people like after her? Like we kind of had a sense like, oh, she's healing Kale. That's why. That's why she's after her. But no. No, guys. Freaking Irene is, okay, she's a big part. And it's just like crazy because like if Selena hadn't saved Irene, then what would have happened? Like Irene is going to help heal all these people that have been affected by the Vogue because Duva, that princess, she got possessed by the Vogue. And that's just, okay, I did not see that coming either. Duva, like she was just like this innocent, like pregnant lady who never gave off red flags. You know who I thought was the Vogue possessed? Because obviously I, I knew it had to be one of the siblings because they were always after each other. They had competition, like a rivalry. I had my bet on Hasara or the Arg, Arg guy. These names, guys, I just, these names. Arg, <laughs> that's like a pirate sound. How do you, s oh gosh. Anyways, I had my bets on those two siblings, not Cashin, but then I was also suspicious of him because he was just so suspiciously nice. I liked him because he was a pretty likable character, but Usually it's always the characters that we like that end up becoming evil. Us book lovers are always like suspicious of every single person. When we found out that Duva was the person that was possessed with the Valg, that was crazy. I even like said out loud like I was reading in a public place <laughs> and I was reading this book and when it was shown that Duva was the one that was possessed, I was like, this? is crazy. So the magic that is embedded in Kale's spine, which what like his wound, it was a very weird thing. It was blocking Irene from healing him fully because it was a magical wound. It wasn't like he fell off a horse and his spine got injured. I was very confused about it because obviously I just thought, oh, he just got hurt. Like, she can fix it. But it was like, it was blocking her and he would see memories like that were haunting him and he was very very haunted by like his soldiers that were tortured and killed and he blamed himself for it and about his father and his family and Irene I think she saw like all those she did she saw like all those memories and then she would like implant a good memory of her like her her and her mother and it would just be like light it would brighten up his darkness and Kale's always gonna have that darkness in his spine and now Kale and Irene are kind of connected which I like I like them being connected they're married okay so they're connected for life anyways I love seeing their relationship play out the way that Irene really hated him in the beginning but then really loved him at the very end and sacrificed herself for him. She gave up a part of herself so that he may live. They are connected now, so if one of them dies, then the other one dies as well. Once Irene is drained, then he can't walk again because he can walk as long as she's fully, she has energy and she's not drained, but once she's drained, then he can't walk it again. I really love the message at the very end when that happened because he told Irene because she felt bad that he couldn't walk and that she really wanted to heal him. And Kale was like, being in that chair does not make me any less of a man than I would be if I was walking. And I just love that. It was such a sweet message to anybody that has a disability, you know, that does not make them any less of a person. And just seeing Kale realize that that just shows his character development and I love seeing my characters grow. Okay, I had a really weird theory because when she was trying to heal his spine, it said something like settled, like his spine wasn't settled. And I was like, oh, theory, theory. What if when Dorian, you know, struck him with his magic in the back, he transferred some magic inside of Kale. And now his magic is settling and that's why he's, that doesn't make any sense. And right when I wrote that down in my notes, I was like, that is dumb. That is not right. But what if I'm right? No, I'm not right. But what if I am? No, I'm not. Okay. I really did feel bad for Kale throughout this whole entire book because before he came to the realization that he wasn't any less of a man when he's in that wheelchair, he went through so many embarrassing moments for himself. He felt very embarrassed that he couldn't walk and he was seeing all these soldiers and they were having to help him onto a horse. And then all those students, Irene's students had to help him off the horse. That was, that was not cool of Irene to do that. I mean, I understood why she did it, 
but I could understand also how he was feeling in that exact moment. He did not want that kind of attention and it just really brought down his confidence, really made him feel insecure. And seeing that side of Kale, we've never seen that side of Kale before. Kale has always been this like strong warrior, Lord Westfall, captain of the guard. So seeing that, that was sad. Okay, so let's back to Zyrtec. Uh, sorry. Sartak. Sartak has this Ruckin and it's like a bird that can fly. It reminded me of the movie How to Train Your Dragon. I don't know if any of you guys have seen those movies, but I watched those like like a weekend ago when I was back home and those movies are so good. If you haven't watched them, please watch them. Just his relationship. Okay. That wasn't cool. His relationship with his Ruckin was so cute. Her name is Kadara, which I love that name. So anytime I like imagine Kadara. I imagine the dragon toothless from how to train your dragon this guy right here isn't he cute like he's so cute he looks like a cat so we see these ruckin and it also raises the question the werverns with the witches like those are their kind of flying dragon things the werverns versus the ruckin how is that gonna play out like we don't know i really hope kadara doesn't die honestly i don't want any of my characters to die in kingdom of ash but i know i know some of them are gonna have to but I don't want any of my ships to be affected. They are too precious and we need to protect them. I really love seeing Sartak and Nesrin's relationship grow because before Nesrin was kind of with Kale but not really with Kale and then she went off with Sartak and just seeing their relationship grow was just so cute. Sartak is a very, he, he reminds me of Rhysand. One part I thought was really funny was when he asked her about her being preoccupied with Kale and she was like all day and he was like I certainly would take all day. He would call her beautiful and he would talk he talked about her like knowing about her. That one heartbreaking point when the spiders okay we'll talk about the spiders but that one point where the spiders were coming after Sartek and he told her that he that he knew about her and that even before he met her and said had eyes on her that he knew he loved her that was uh, and then he just got dragged away and it was like okay um love you too so we kind of find out that a darlin's old king dorian's dad while he was being possessed he sensed that the vow wanted to take control of magic like the healers and their magic so that's why he ordered them killed because he'd rather them be killed than being possessed and used by these vow. So that was interesting to learn. Also, that one part when Irene was walking to Kale's room and she sent someone following her and she ran into Kale's room and that thing was banging on the door and calling her name, Irene, Irene. And we know that was Duva, but like that is, that is, it was freaking creepy. One thing that just really got my blood boiling in this book was how the siblings, Hessar and Argon, whatever his name was, how they would talk about Aelin and it was, it was so mean. Like they would talk crap about her in front of Irene and Kale and it was just like, no, you guys don't know. You guys don't know what she's been through. You guys don't know what she's, she's gonna make a better world. She's trapped in a box right now. Are you guys trapped in a box? No. So you don't know how that feels, okay? Stop talking bad about the future queen. And I'm so glad that that one part when they were celebrating Irene's birthday and Hissar was just going at it, talking about Aelin and Kale was just talking back at her and then she said something about him being in a chair, insulting him. Irene just pushed her right into the water. You go, Irene. You go. You just show that girl who's boss. That one scary scene when Nesrin and Sartak and Kadara were trapped in that big spider web. This was a heart pounding scene. I just kept thinking of these spiders and I just kept thinking that they looked like the spiders from Harry Potter. She was looking at this baby ruck and it was tr it was hurt and it was trying to fly away and then all of a sudden it gets snatched and you can't hear its cries anymore. First off, that poor little baby ruck. Second off, we better we better freaking get out of here. Now we know that like they are from the world of Valgs. My all-time like favorite scene was on page 503. Yeah, I have the page marked. These siblings were talking more smack about Aelin. They were talking about their siblings maybe marrying Aelin. So Kale goes, marriage is not an option for her. And they're like, to a man. He's like, oh yeah, a prince. And they're like, oh, Dorian. No, no, it's, it's not Dorian. Prince Rowan Whitethorn of Dornell former commander to Queen Maeve and a member of her royal household. 
this was the best scene because it was like a mic drop, you know, like, oh, there you go. Now you can stop talking smack about Aelin. Okay, she's got Rowan on her side. She broke the glass castle. Um, what can you guys do? Fight each other to be heir? Now it all makes sense. Maeve is not the queen of the Fae. She's the queen of the Val. So apparently she was married to one of these Val like princes in her this other realm and then she just went into the human realm where all of us are at and she manipulated all these people to think that she was a Fae queen and that's why she lived so long because she's not really Fae. She's a Valg. And now it makes sense because in my Empire of Storms book review, I kept saying, why is this lady here? Why is she trying to mess everything up? This doesn't make sense. Why is she trying to get involved? Well, now we know why she's trying to get involved. She's a Valg queen. <laughs> there you go. There's your explanation. We also see this other character and his name is Falcon. Khan Falcon. He's the character from the Assassin's Blade that Selena met and he gave her the spider silk and it's so weird like I'm so happy that I read the Assassin's Blade because if I didn't read it then I wouldn't understand any of this. He's a shapeshifter just like Lysandra and I kept thinking like ooh that's kind of weird and then he was like oh I have a niece. I don't know where she is. She's probably 20 years old. Lysandra, this is Lysandra. He also described what her mother looked like and it's not what Lysandra looks like now because obviously Lysandra doesn't even know what her true self looks like. It makes me wonder if Lysandra is going to figure out what she actually looks like and if she's going to become that person. And I'm also really excited because I want her and Falcon to meet because she has no family and he doesn't have any family either, so them meeting and then him also realizing, oh, Aelin, you, can you, can you still help me get that, get my 20 years of life back? Maybe that will happen and maybe he will go to his original age because he looks like he's like 40 years old, but he's actually 27. Also, is like everyone becoming royalty up in here? Nezrin's gonna end up with Sartak and he's the heir. So, so she's gonna become royalty. Kale and Irene, she's kind of like the heir to the Torre. Aelin and Rowan are also royalty, Dorian and Manon, yeah, royalty as well. And maybe that's a good thing because then they're all, they're all ruling all the kingdoms and they're all friends. So then we all can have a peaceful, peaceful reign. A really emotional part was when Kale, at the very end, Kale and Irene are married now, which is just so great. And he sees the note that has been so close to Irene. This note has encouraged her throughout all this time. And it's a note that Aelin left her. You know, the world needs more healers. And he reads the note and he realizes this is Selena's handwriting. She would have been 16, 17 at this time. He cried because this, this woman had saved his future wife. And it's just crazy how everything has connected. Sarah J. Mass has built this series and just it's just amazing it's crazy how she's connected everything and everything makes sense all oh, these plot twists and all these characters who are just interconnected and intertwined it's just crazy how, she, how she's written this series it's just so amazing and i'm so excited for kingdom of ash i'm excited to see all the reunions happen with dorian and kale and aelin and irene although aelin is still trapped in a box i'm really scared about that because i hope we get her out of the box kind of halfway through the book so we can like she can help fight this war because if she's in this box the entire book then it's like she's not fighting the war Kind of. Aelin has accomplished so much on her part. She's gotten all these armies and now Kale has all these armies. I loved seeing the part where Irene healed Duva. She got the Valg out of her. Her baby is fine and it's all good and that is why the Coggin helped her because she said save my people. I read some reviews on Goodreads and some people were kind of iffy if this book was necessary and that it was too long but I don't really think that at all because this book was crazy necessary. We needed to know how Kale got all these people in this storyline. There was no way this storyline was going to be short and there was no way that this storyline wasn't unimportant. This book was very important to read and to have. And I'm so happy that I read it right before Kingdom of Ash comes out so I can read Kingdom of Ash right when it comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed this book so much. Tell me your theories down below of what you think is going to happen in Kingdom of Ash. How do you think that's going to play out? There's no way that Kingdom of Ash is going to be an unemotional read. 
excited. It's going to be a roller coaster and I'm really excited to dive into that book. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts about this book was and your thoughts about Kingdom of Ash. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and this book. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!